Hey free to play gang, welcome back to another video. So for today's video, this is more of a relic showcase. Just to keep you guys on track with what are the stats that I have and what are some of the some of the better builds that I think makes the most sense in my position as an endgame player. So without further ado, let's try to get this over and done with as quickly as possible. So the first is going to be Gabriel. Everyone is going to have Gabriel. And this is probably one of the ways that I would suggest for you to build a Gabriel to make her as toxic and with as much utility as possible as well. So ideally, you might want to run her with Windwalker or even Ocean Waves, but Zeus Relic set is proving to be a little bit stronger for me, especially in PvP and some of the PvE content as well, like for example, Cube Miracle and a Temporal Tower. The 20% chance to stun on your skills is incredibly strong for her. So aside from that, it's very important for you to have decent speed and decent accuracy as well. Try to aim for 80% accuracy and that is probably all there is to it. Now next we have Dona. I barely ever use him ever except for PvP defense. So here are the stats on him. This is like I've never touched his stats for like the longest period of time, maybe like the past three months or so. So he's currently on crit damage defense defense, which is uh, ideally what you might want to achieve as well. And you might want to have a 100% crit rate and alongside as much crit damage and defense as you can. But the extra little sprinkle on top would be speed because he needs to have at least another plus 50 speed or something. This is still a bit too slow because especially against like enemy Dahlias for example, you do not want to be lapped all that much. A little bit more speed will always be very helpful. And now moving on to my Jin Yu Yao, I also don't really use her anymore, not even in PvP unless maybe in RTA. But the thing is I suck at RTA so I, I basically don't really use her all that much. But the way that you want to build her is probably using Windwalker. I think this is still going to be the best way. And I think uh, Avatara is going to be really good as well because she counter attacks on her normal attack which has a 75% chance to stun the enemies which is really nice on Avatara. So just load her with a lot of HP and if possible some accuracy as well. She's going to need the accuracy to land her stuns and to land uh, the third skill as well. So the third skill which returns debuffs onto the enemy, this requires accuracy. So honestly my accuracy is a little bit too low. So try to aim for 80% accuracy and as much HP as possible and as much speed as you can. She don't need to be the fastest on your lineup, but maybe like the second fastest or so. So I'm gonna skip Tang Shen because I will probably never ever build him. And then now next we have Tricky. The way you wanna build him is probably the same as how you wanna build your Lucas. So most of you guys should have your Lucas by now. So the way you wanna build him is to run him with the Tyranny of Zeus. This is like, like probably like the fixed relic set for him. So Tyranny of Zeus and Avatara, this is like the perfect combo for him. Because whenever he strips on his third skill, he has a good chance of landing stuns. And if he's stunned on the first hit of his third skill, you are gonna extend the stun to two turns. So that is incredibly strong. So here are the stats. So I mean, okay, so for all controllers and most supports as well, you might want to have 80% uh, accuracy. This is like the perfect amount and as much speed as you can. You do not need to be the fastest on your team, probably like the second or third fastest on your team. So something like this is what you might want to achieve for. And of course his base HP is super high. So giving him a lot more HP is going to be easier and I think more optimal as well. So HP, HP, speed. Now moving on to Bayondina, this is probably my favorite pick for Holo Battle. I do love using her, especially in Holo Battle. Now th this is probably the only reason why you would ever use her, right? It's either Holo Battle or maybe Point War. But the way you want to build her is with a lot of attack and a lot of crit damage. And you don't necessarily need a 100% crit rate. You can do with 70% crit rate and you just top her off with a Dahlia. And she's going to work perfectly fine, right? She's going to have a 100% crit rate that way. And the way you want to build her is just straight up DPS. So she's going to use her third skill to one shot anyone and that's about it. But the thing is, do take note that you might need to max out her passive over here because having a 70% chance of dispelling all buffs is not good enough. You need 100%. So do take note of that. My Biondina definitely needs more skill ups. Now next is my Ahmed. I don't really use him all that much because I don't have the Espers to, to work with him. So for example, I don't have Hyde. So the way you want to build him is just load him with a lot of HP and a lot of speed and that's about it. That's all he needs, just HP and speed because his healing scales off his own max HP, right? So the first skill and the third skill as well. And obviously you want to have speed. Now the thing is, I'm running him with Windwalker and I'm not running him Ocean Waves is because I feel like Ocean Waves only work better if you can reduce his third skill down to four turns of cooldown. Now that he's stuck at five turns, I don't think Ocean Waves is as effective as, as a Windwalker. So I just want you to take more turns and heal more with his first skill. And that's probably the better way for me right now with zero skill ups. And obviously Avatara is going to be super important because he's going to heal on counter procs. And then now let's move on to Tier. So Tia is definitely one of my most favorite PvP experts. I use her everywhere. I use her in RTA, I use her in standard point wall, I use her in holo battles as well, I use her everywhere. And the way you want to build her is to have her fast, 
with uh like honestly the rest of her stats don't really matter except for accuracy so make her fast with decent accuracy and that's about it you don't need her to have hp at all she can die after using her skill and that's totally fine right and the way i think works best for her is to run her with the zeus set she do not need windwalker because you only need your Dahlia for example, right? your Dahlia or your Unas to be faster than her to push her AP which means that you can definitely compensate by using the Zeus Relic set for the extra chance of critting when you use her third skill at the start. So this is why in some of my showcases you will see her critting on her third skill and it's because of the Zeus set here. And as for our two piece here, because she is mostly going to be a PvP Esper, you can either go for the Light Above or using the Shield Relic is, is, is pretty good in my opinion. Now moving on to Liling, this is the way I'll build him as well with the Zeus Relic set. I feel like this is ideal for him because he multi-hits a lot and just based on my experience thus far it feels like multi-hits increase the chance of you landing your stuns because it seems like every single hit that you deal has a percentage chance of landing stuns so there is that and obviously the way you want to build him is with like maybe you don't really need a 100% crit rate but because i use him in many different areas right i use him almost everywhere so i would need the 100% crit rate sometimes but if you're strictly using him for pvp then you only need 70% so as much attack as you can, even though it's a little bit more difficult because you're using the Zeus set, and of course as much crit damage as possible. But as you notice here, my speed is actually pretty decent, and most of my DPS experts have decent speed. And the reason for that is because in order for you to overtake some of the opposing enemies, sometimes you might need to have a lot more base speed so that you can capture the AP push that your Dahlia can provide for you, that your Unas can provide for you, or even your TF for example. So having a little bit more speed is quite important, which is why I'm actually using a speed relic on his slot 6. Now obviously you might want to have a little bit more accuracy on him, without the accuracy he may not be able to do his AP absorption on his third skill and his first skill as well, so do take note of that, accuracy is quite important. Now next one we have Gaius, so this is the way I'm building him right now, I'm using uh, Thor, you can also use Astro Witchcraft, you can also use the Zeus set, both works as well, actually you know what, a lot of different sets work for him, and the reason why I'm using Broken on him is because this gives me uh, pretty decent stats all around right, so all the sub stats here are pretty good. So as you can see, I'm also running speed on him and he is pretty fast at 207. I would highly recommend you to run him fast. But the thing is, if you want to use him as a fast fodder farmer, you may need to remove some speed just to compensate with more attack power. But ideally, this is the way that I want to run him right now and it's been working really well for me. So this is probably one of my most powerful Aspers at the moment. Now moving on to Clara. So she has been heavily nerfed in uh, one of the recent updates, right? But I still feel like she is very strong with Ocean Waves and of course the Light Above. I'm no longer running her with Avatara anymore because I feel like the counter attack is not going to provide as much utility as it did before where you could grant your allies immunity. So now that you're not able to grant immunity, you can only cleanse one debuff and give a little bit of heal. I don't think the Avatara makes so much sense anymore. So I think the Light Above is still pretty okay. Which means that when an enemy engages you, they will need to strip your immunity. If not, they are not going to stop your Clara. So when, as soon as your Clara moves, right, she's going to heal everyone with her third skill, remove most of the debuffs, right? And then that's that's basically, that's where you can counter attack afterwards. So give her a lot of speed and that's basically it, right? A lot of speed, a lot of HP. Her normal attack heals based on her max HP. So yeah, I think HP is still a little bit more impactful. Also do take note that because of her typing here, it's probably better to run her with double HP. If not, an enemy Bayondina can just one-shot you very easily. Now Zora, the way you want to build her is probably just like one of your typical DPS experts. You can either run her with Hades, you can run her with Zeus as well. You can even run her with like the typical Thor set, so that works as well. So just run her with a lot of attack power, a lot of crit damage, and as much speed as you can master. Now this is Sienna, she's not on like a very good set at all, but the way you want to build her is definitely going to be fast. Uh, some people run her super fast, like the fastest set that they have, so that she can turn one, reduce AP on her third skill. And some people who have already maxed her abilities may want to run her with Ocean Waves with Avatara. And I think Avatara is probably going to be a mainstay because it pushes the AP of herself and one random ally as well, which is very helpful. So how I feel about her is you want to run her with more defense. I think this is way too little defense because her base defense is so high and the typing protects her from Biondina, right? Now next we have Ophelia. So do tell you that the set I have on her moves around a lot. It moves in between quite a few of my Aspers, like for example my Zora, my Drew, and of course Ophelia. So just give her a lot of attack, a lot of crit damage, and possibly a 100% crit rate in some of the situations. And of course, some speed. Very typical DPS kit. However, sometimes it might be quite important to have accuracy, especially if she's going to be a sole defense breaker. If not, she's not going to be able to land defense break on her third skill. So let's move on to Asenath. Now, I use her quite a fair bit recently because of uh, Shadow Stream, right? So, the way you want to build her is to be super fast. You can either run her with Windwalker or Ocean Waves, both work as well. 
And uh, the two piece over here, I think just give her whatever that gives her the most speed. And I think that's basically it. So just HP and speed and that's about it. You don't really need accuracy for her first skill in my opinion because it is not really like her main thing. Now moving on to Jiang Men. Okay, so now for her, she's also a DPS as well, but the thing is the way you want to build her is slightly different. And the way I build her is even more different than what most people build her, okay? So you can either run her with Hades if you're using her as a farmer, or you can use Zeus on her if you're using her for like most like PvE content, or maybe even some of the PvP content if you have a team that uh, revolves around Jiangman, for example. So the way I build her, which is probably different to the way most people build her, is crit damage, defense, or HP, whichever that works as well, and speed. So the thing is, I do not have any attack main relics on her so as you can see my attack power is not very strong but the thing is i have quite a fair bit of crit damage which is going to compensate for my dps because do take note that her nether bloom debuff over here it does crit so having crit damage is going to be super important and the reason why i want her to be fast is so that she can land her debuffs a little bit more frequently as well so avatara is a little bit important in my opinion because sometimes when the enemy does not have nether bloom for example you will still be able to counter attack a good amount of the time right so with an avatar set, it actually pushes your counter rate from 50% via her passive to somewhere between 60 and 70%, which is, in my opinion, a very big difference. Now, the little bit of accuracy could be essential because uh, she does land poisons as well whenever the enemies have nether bloom. And the thing is, nether bloom does not require accuracy, but your poisons and your silence does require accuracy. So there is that. So 34% accuracy is not enough. I think ideally you want to have 80%, but somewhere around the 50% range is good enough. Now next we have Ira. I've talked about her recently in my K16 video. So the way you want to build her is just make her fast, right? And give her avatar so that whenever she procs a counter attack, she has a chance of giving herself another turn. And if you've watched my K16 video, you know, you need her to bounce in between her second and her third skill as much as possible. At least for the, the more easy free to play method of dealing with K16. So just give her a lot of speed, a lot of HP, a lot of defense. That's about it. Now as for Louis, I am no longer using him because I am not farming Fafnir right now. I'm farming Kronos. So because of that, I have removed his equipment, but you know, just a typical DPS build. And here is my sender. So I have uh, changed his stats a little bit. So I have reduced his speed greatly, right? So now he has like 190, almost 190 speed, but he has a lot of attack power and a very average crit damage over here. But the thing is, I'm trying to push his crit rate to 100%, but it's a little bit difficult because I'm trying to achieve 80% accuracy, which I have finally managed to do so. So this is, I think I'm not, I'm probably not going to touch his kit for a long time. I think this is a really, really solid kit right now. He's able to deal a lot of damage and has a very good chance of landing his stuns and AP control. So this is quite complete. Now next we have Heng Rye in the house. So the way you want to build her, typical support, right? Just speed and HP and that's about it. But the only catch here is I'm using Astro Witchcraft on her instead of like let's say Panacea, Ocean Waves or Wind Walker and all those. And the reason why you want to use her with Astro Witchcraft is because she has a 20% chance of getting another turn which allows her to use her passive twice. So that's about it. Now next, Loyan. I'm currently not building him but the way you want to build him is just a Typical control as well, right? So speed and accuracy, that's your main priority. Next, we have Chloe. So I'm also not using any relics on her because like I said, her relics are moving around a lot. And right now her relics are currently on Ophelia. So you can refer to the Ophelia part of the video to get a little bit more information on her stats. Now next, we are going to move on to Longian. So this is the way I'm using him because I use him quite a fair bit in PvP, especially for RTA. That's why I have the light above set on him so that it protects him from like turn 1 controls, turn 1 cooldown reset and that kind of stuff, right? And Ocean Waves is quite broken for him in my opinion because he's going to go through his 3rd and 2nd skill very frequently so he's going to have a lot of control on his kit. So the way you want to build him is with decent speed and a good chunk of either HP or defense, whatever that makes him a little bit tankier and that's about it. Just let him take a lot of turns, land debuffs and all that. His accuracy is on the lower end of 48% so ideally you want to have 80%. Now I'm going to skip Dahlia for obvious reasons, but just make her super fast and that's it. You don't need to care about the rest of her stats. You don't need to care about her attack power, you don't need to care about HP. Just make sure that she's super fast, your fastest Esper on your team and that's about it. Unless you have an Unas. If you have an Unas, then make him the fastest Esper instead. Now as for the twins, I am using CHUE quite a little bit. I have not actually talked about the twins because I have not actually done an in-depth test on them just yet. But the thing is, I've been using the black twin a fair bit on his own. So these are the stats on him. Uh, you can choose to use Ocean Waves on him, but I don't think that is so crucial because if you're going to be running the White Twin, the White Twin is going to give him more of his third skill procs anyway, so I think this is still fine. Just build him super DPS and uh, with a little bit of speed and that should be okay. Now as for the White Twin, this is how I'm running him right now, but uh, this is definitely not the best kit, okay? So he needs more accuracy, that's for sure, and he needs a little bit more speed because I think unlike the Black Twin, the White Twin needs more speed just to take more turns, more rotations basically. So just build him like a typical control expert and nothing will go wrong. 
And here is my Lin Xiao. So she is fast. I would like her to be a lot faster, maybe like 210, 220 maybe. And just give her a lot of attack power, a lot of crit damage, and that's it. And accuracy, of course. So in my opinion, there is a little bit of room for improvement here, especially in her HP. Her HP is really low, but this is the best that I can manage right now. And now next, we have our Li Guang. I've changed her kit up uh, just a fair bit. So I've actually reduced her accuracy. I'm trying to push her to be more offensive, right? So I've lowered her speed in exchange for more attack power and crit damage. And I think this right now is quite solid. Okay, so with this spread of stats, she is actually quite a high performer. And then now for Catherine, I do use her in Fafnir, and apart from Fafnir, there is not much elsewhere. So I'm using the Divine Blessing set on her. If you do not have the Divine Blessing anymore because it is it's no longer available for farming, you can obviously use Astro Witchcraft as well for the extra chance of you to remove debuffs on your team. So that's about it. And the way you want to build her is to be super fast and just tanky, and that's all. You don't really need anything else. Now here are the stats of my Taylor, who is one of my primary DPS experts in PvP. As you can see, he has decent speed as always, right? Good chunk of attack and crit damage, and that's about it. You might want to have a little bit more accuracy if you can manage it, but it's not the end of the world if you do not have accuracy. He's still gonna perform really well. Now, Nicole, I don't really use her at all. I do have her fully skilled up, fully whatever, right? But I don't find that there's a lot of content that requires her, so I don't use her. And then now for Laura, this is the ideal set that you want on her, right? You want her to have the Snow Dowager and the Shield set or the Adamantine set and a lot of HP. This is far from a lot. You need her to have like 60,000 HP or something like that. Speed is not so much of a problem for her. You don't really need to invest speed into her. So just throw a lot of HP onto her and probably a good chunk of resistance and that's about it. Now, as for my Xiaoyin, I have not used him yet. I have maxed his skills and all that, but I just haven't gotten around to, to using him because, like I said, I'm not currently farming Fafnir, and I'm not going to use him for Kronos as well. I have another team for Kronos. But obviously, the way you want to build him is just like a typical DPS, right? That's about it. And finally, for my Drew, you can refer to my Ophelia stats if you want to have a little bit more information on his kit. Because like I said earlier, I'm just shifting that one relic set around quite a few different aspects. And here is the stats of my Tang Yun. So very typical, right? I have not actually changed his stats for like the longest period of time, maybe like four months or something like that. He has been on Ocean Waves and Avatar for the longest period of time and with a speedy set as well because I use him in Fafnir and sometimes in Holo Battles. So the thing is you do not necessarily need to run it Ocean Waves. I do feel like Ocean Waves is good because that allows him to go in between his second and third skill a little bit more frequently, which is kind of nice. And you definitely don't need to give him a speed relic over here. You can just give him like extra attack power and all that so that he has like more one-shot potential against Heights and Donas in PvP. But apart from that, I'm quite happy with his kit. And then now moving on to Freddy, so I do use him a lot in APAP, alright? So strictly only in APAP and maybe possibly in PvP as well to deal with height mostly. Anyway, so here are his stats. Just make him a bruiser, right? So the way a bruiser functions is with crit damage, attack percentage, and HP percentage. Just give him a good chunk of attack power and defensive stats, and he's going to perform very well for you. So as you can see in his stats, he has good HP, good attack, good speed, good crit, good crit damage. That's all you need for him. And then as for Chalmers, I'm not using him right now because I'm not actually focusing on any speedy K16 team or something like that. So as for now, I'm using his stats on other Aspers. And then now we have my Berenice. She has quite decent HP, decent speed, and uh, decent accuracy. And that's all you need on her. I'll think that Avatara set is pretty good because whenever she counterattacks in the content that you're using her for, she's going to counterattack with a defense break, which is very big. Now moving on to Suhua. So the way you want to build her, I think this is probably one of the ways that I would build her, but you can definitely go with Windwalker, that's fine, for a more consistent use of her third skill, for example. But for me, I want her to throw her skills more frequently, so that's why I'm using her with the Ocean Wave set. So just typical support build, right? HP, defense, uh, speed, all that good stuff, right? And then now for my Pritzker, who is probably one of the last few experts for me to showcase for this video. I use him in PvP as well, right? Holo Battle especially. So I need him on the light above. I think this is perfect for him. Avatara is okay. Avatara is decent for the opportunity for you to land a, a counter stun because of his passive, which is a very niche situation. So that is not always very advisable. So I think he is okay with the light above. And you need him to be relatively fast as well, which is why I have the Windwalker set on him so that he can take one of the first few turns to land his crowd control. I'm not going to talk too much about my Li Ao, here are his stats, just very typical control Esper. And uh, for my Jacob, right, the stats that you have on him, honestly, it doesn't really matter all that much. I don't really use him all that much anymore, not even for APAP. Uh, but ideally, you need to have 80% accuracy because in order for him to counter with a poison on his Fangs buff, you will now need accuracy. So accuracy is going to be super important. So 80% accuracy, the rest can go into HP and maybe a little bit of speed and that's about it. 
So I hope that this video gave you a little bit of insight on the experts that I'm using right now and some of the stats that I have running on them. There is a lot of room for improvement on some of the experts as well. So like uh, for example, my Fabrice and Anacidora, I don't really talk about them because I'm not actually using them all that much right now. But hopefully this video helped you in some way, especially for some of you guys who have been uh, very curious about knowing the stats of all of my aspers. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, it really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now with that said, this has been Dairy Free To Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.